if we see the other part of the US foreign policy, assassination, drone, use of drones to quote unquote take out people, baseball cards, who are going to be taken out every Tuesday. This is a part of the US policy today. And they have also supported Israel and its assassinations in different parts of the uh, in West Asia. So they have never been particular about this issues as they claim for others. You know, Trump has also brought in other issues like political issues huh? uh, in terms of Middle Eastern politics. Number one, you know, the statement on Saudi Arabia opens with a big artillery barrage on Iran. Yes, of course. So now this is again a message to the Saudis that look, you know, Khashoggi is not the issue here. The issue is, you know, they are con you're, you, we, I have counted on you, again, first person singular. I have counted on you when I embarked on this path because you guys came and told me and put me onto this and I am now in a project halfway through. No, you better stick to it and I, all the support that you promised, you deliver. better deliver. And then he mentions also in the statement Israel. What has Israel got to do with Khashoggi? Or, uh, you know, he has said this because my son-in-law has up his sleeves a certain package for the Middle East for solving the Palestinian problem. And you told me that you will sell it by endorsing it in some way or the other when it, at the 11th hour to make it possible. Israel comes in two, three ways. Number one, uh, this present arrangement in Saudi Arabia has worked brilliantly for Israelis because a subterranean relationship, subsoil relationship, this Saudi regime has had shown the courage, if you look at it from the Israeli-American point of view, courage to bring it to the surface and openly acknowledge it. It has now therefore got a wider acceptability. In the, in, the, in, the, in the Arab Muslim world. Because when the Saudis say it, it's difficult to contradict it publicly. So the Saudi support is very important for Israel and that is important for the United States also. Secondly, the Saudis had uh, promised that uh, they will work with the Americans to impose, impose, I'm using the word carefully, impose a solution on Palestinian issue on the basis on the uh, understand on the on this uh, estimation that this is the core issue in the Middle East. Without this, a kind of a uh, quantum jump, you know, in terms of uh, a new Middle East will not be possible. So uh, Kushner has been working on this. Jared Kushner, Trump's son-in-law. And Israelis are giving all the inputs into this. So Saudis must continue on this track. That is the second part of it. And the third one is a kind of a, 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 a regional alliance uh, where Israel will get strategic depth. This is the talk about the Arab NATO plus Arab Israel. Arab NATO, and yes. And uh, Iran is a bogey. So the Iran bogey and uh, any other aspect can also come into this, but essentially to ensure that uh, re Israel's regional isolation is mitigated and it gets embedded in an alliance system which cuts across religions, which cuts across the Arab world. And that is a permanent solution for a greater Israel, you know, this is uh, it, it, it naturally it will lead to greater Israel because after that the Israelis couldn't care less, you know, about these pockets inside the country, Gaza and West Bank and all that. And they will. So in terms of uh, the fulfillment of the Israeli agenda, Golan Heights are all as part of Israel. So you know this is uh, the f this is the scenario, and then uh, you see uh, he has shown another big concession. Trump has shown another big concession by describing the Yemen situation as uh, something which is unavoidable because of Iran. He says Iran must withdraw its yes, presence and yes. Iran doesn't have a presence doesn't have to any withdraw. presence. So he has refused to uh, criticize Saudi Arabians and uh, all this um, threat of you know, pressure on Saudi Arabia 
is lifted. That's he's, incorrect. He, That's he, true. He, 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 say, he finds nothing wrong with what the Saudis have done there. So, you know, this looks, uh, uh, Prabir, uh, prima facie as something of a very generous attitude, like a blank check for the Saudi Arabians. But the cutting edge is that this wish list is so very demanding that one can tell right at the beginning that the Saudis are not going to be able to carry this forward very long. So here's a question. This is, a, as you said, a very onerous wish list. Mm -hmm. Saudis may not have the capacity to carry it. Mm -hmm. The second is why the Saudi establishment and the, shall we say, the Congress of Princes so should not instead jettison the crown prince? You see, I see that uh, unlikely. Uh, now we are moving away from Trump eh, the, to the um, alignments there. Um, I see that uh, unlikely because uh, this Muslim Brotherhood factor is, a, is definitely at the root of the murder of Khashoggi. Trump was, also mentions it, eh, yes, by the he's way. He's also aligned to Muslim Brotherhood. Yes. Turkey, Erdogan yes. is Muslim Brotherhood. Yes. yes. Hamas are Muslim Brotherhood. Yes. So that yes. Yes. correlation yes. is there. Uh, you know, the, uh, the fact is, uh, it has got acceptability in the Saudi ruling circles, that is in terms of the family, royal family. This uh, interpretation of the Muslim Brotherhood as an existential threat to the regime. After all, Muslim Brotherhood seeks democratization because it is only through democratization that Muslim Brotherhood can make a headway and can capture power in these countries like it happened in Egypt. So these kings and all these have to go away, you know. So this is an existential thing for their ruling power. Then secondly, what I notice is this, that uh, there is really no stomach for uh, 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 a removal of the regime or a change of regime. Regime change is a different connotation. Changing the regime under pressure like this from the outside, because this can have a domino effect in the region. You're fragile internally as well. Yeah, regionally also. Regionally also. Because a number of these guys have their own problems. You know, if you take the king of Jordan, he is also sitting on a volcano, you know. Yes, of course. So you see, uh, there is a democratic stir going on in, uh, in uh, Kuwait, which they are barely able to control. Earlier Bahrain. So big upheaval in Bahrain. You know, all this uh, shows that uh, uh, a change in Saudi Arabia can bring about pressures on the other regimes. So on this question of uh, changing the setup in Saudi Arabia, I think there is no support in the region. So projecting this Khashoggi thing as an existential issue, squashing the domestic dissent thereby, dissipating the domestic dissent thereby, and then a third curious factor, which, uh, you know, we again paint the Saudi situation in black and white terms, but there are subtle shades. Now, you know, the uh, point is, this young man, the crown prince, has a very strong constituency in the Saudi society supporting him, the youth. Because, you know, day-to-day uh, uh, -day till Khashoggi came, we were not noticing a number of moves he has made in terms of relaxing restrictions on the society and uh, the kind of modernization vision that he has projected it has caught the imagination of the youngsters because this is what they would also want their country to be. You know, uh, Arabs, uh, remember, they are very chatty on the internet. You know, uh, probably uh, other than the Chinese, I don't think any society, you know, like the Arab society, immediately takes to internet, you know, and uh, they keenly follow uh, and make up for the deficiencies in their own media and all otherwise. And, you know, they have the very, very, very fairly good knowledge of what, where they want to be and what they are not and so on. So uh, a strong measure of support from the Saudi society for him. And uh, I think even the factions 
uh, which are known to be outside the corridors of power today within the royal family, even they grudgingly admit that the crown prince is rather popular as a figure in the Saudi society. This really doesn't matter perhaps for an oligarchy, but it's a fact of life. So you see, uh, all this factor also comes in favor of that and we, we really don't want to talk about it much because these days you, we want only to condemn them for the Khashoggi murder. But uh, uh, for, uh, ultimately the crown prince is also a politician and uh, from a politician's point of view, the mass support is a factor. So then there are a number of other things like he is controlling the levers of power and uh, power flows through the barrel of the gun, <laughs> you know, in such situations. He has controlled the entire police and military yeah. apparatus yeah. Inside, the, inside Saudi Arabia. Apart from that, the only other issue is it also seems to have strengthened Turkey vis-a-vis -vis the Saudis in the region. And uh, do you see that uh, that will continue? And we also see that there is no reapprochement which appeared might happen between Saudis, sort of also offering, uh, shall we say, various monetary concessions to Turkey. All that see, doesn't seem to have happened. Erdogan is still on a very, uh, shall we say, strong note on bringing to book Khashoggi's uh, murderer, who he thinks the main culprit is the prince, and he's made that pretty clear. So do you see Turkey emerging as a bigger player in this and not sort of towing either the American line and also uh, being able to play an independent role as you talked about the Muslim Brotherhood as the key figure of Muslim Brotherhood today in the region? Undoubtedly so. You know, the uh, Turks are actually, uh, it's a very ambitious country and uh, uh, they have set their sights very high as a regional power and uh, they are moving very systematically and it's an ideology based regime uh, and uh, the Saudi situation, how it develops, is going to affect their own uh, forward march. Uh, so you see, Turkey is playing for very high stakes. I think a number of people calculated that, you know, taking this old habit of the Saudis, throwing money at any problem and solving the problem, they would throw some green money at, uh, you know, the and the, the Turks and the Turkish economy can afford to have money. But uh, Qatar is doing that for Turkey. So Qatar, uh, Turk, Erdogan is today liberated from financial worries. And Turkey is the second largest military power in terms yes. of so forces, soldiers yes, yes. In, the, in the NATO. Yes. And you know, the, a curious thing which has happened is that the Khashoggi uh, affair has uh, brought about a certain proximity between Turkey and the US intelligence, which wasn't there before. Now, this is very interesting because for the US intelligence also, Muslim Brotherhood has been a very key interlocutor for a long time. It is a strategic asset for a long yes, time. Yes, yes. I've even got in my computer a photograph of a Muslim Brotherhood delegation. Fashion hour in 1956. No, in 2017. 2017. A Muslim Brotherhood delegation coming out of the US Congress which went there for lobbying. And you know how the American system works. Now this delegation has definitely had the support of the intelligence establishment. And this lobbying among the US congressmen was in fact to prepare for transitions involving the Muslim Brotherhood which are in the pipeline. So you can imagine that you see there has always been a constituency, I don't want to mention uh, the names here of the CIA people, but uh, 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 there are people, there is a strong constituency uh, uh, because a number of them are writers also today after leaving uh, 30, 35 years in the CIA. 
you know, um, who believe that uh, American security interests demand the democratization of the Middle East. But democratization of the Middle East in a way that uh, it brings to power forces which are going to have a congruence of interest with the United States and which will therefore work with the United States. And that is the only enduring solution to the American predicament in the Middle East politics. You know, that's an interesting point that you're making because this was the congruence why Muslim Brotherhood was preferred over what would be called secular nationalist Arab figures yes. like Nasser, yes. like Assad. Yes. <clears throat> and they were nationalist and were quite willing yes. to have certain relations with the United States. But the United States concretely chose these figures, including in Iran, mm -hmm. because nationalism means also control over resources. Yes. And therefore, therefore antithetical to U.S. Interests. Correct. You see, Imam Khomeini had a word for this group of people. He used to call it American Islam, you know, American runs of Islam. You know, Muslim Brotherhood and Iran uh, have a troubled, relation, troubled relationship. Uh, but of course, for transformation of the region, what the Muslim Brotherhood can bring about a transformation of region, uh, of the region, uh, Iranians are not going to block it because Iran also wants, you know, a kind of a system towards an Islamic regime. You and know, also want the monarchies to go. Yes, monarchies to go. So you see, but coming back to this point, the Turkish point, therefore, what I see in this period since October 2 is a proximity developing between the US intelligence, the CIA, and Turkey. Because a number of these leaks have come and they are being picked up and uh, you know they are being uh, burnished and refloated from the United States in the American media. So there is a collaborative project going on, you know, and uh, Trump knows it. Definitely Trump knows it and the way he dispatched the CIA director to go and look into the you know, into the Turkish archives to see how much they know. That was what was expected when the director came to, Mos uh, to, to, to Turkey to cons for consultations. It was this, that uh, Trump knows that uh, Turkey can spoil it. So what Trump has done is, again, uh, that part we, has not come out very openly here. Trump has uh, sent a note to the Justice Department and the FBI that Erdogan's number one enemy, this Islamist preacher by name Fethullah Gulen, who is sitting in Pennsylvania in a big ranch, you know, and enjoying the support, and his green card was actually recommended by top CIA officials when he fled Turkey. Now Erdogan has got all the dopes on him. He's sitting there. That he could be, that Turkey's request for repatriation could be partly met by Americans kicking him out of America you know, American soil, from where, so that, you know, it doesn't become an issue between uh, Erdogan and Turkey. Erdogan and the United yes, States. No, Trump's uh, motivation here is very clear, because Trump immediately came under attack from American press and American writers who have voiced opinions on behalf of the CIA. This is, in fact, to bring it out that the CIA is behind Gulen. This is, in a way, to blackmail uh, and to complicate the CIA's uh, spring <laughs> with the with, with Erdogan, you know, it's, it's all very getting very murky now, you know, and uh, Erdogan knows very well that this is what. Uh, and then another place where he has done is there is a uh, I'm going getting into uh, uh, a little detail because it's important here. There's a bank by name Hulk Bank. Now that m a bank was used by Turkey to circumvent the American sanctions. On Iran oil. In oil. fact, we also routed our payments to the Alcohol. Yes. Bank. Now, that bank's uh, director or assistant director is sitting in prison in America. Americans yes. caught hold of him, and he is undergoing trial in a Manhattan federal court. Now, the point is, this man's testimony, testimony and others have shown that uh, this was done on behalf of people who were either close associates of Erdogan or even family members. And uh, even a mention a person like uh, his uh, son-in-law, who is now the finance minister. So this can lead to sanctions against Turkey, and it can be very damaging for Erdogan. 
So he is again signal from there. Turkey is uh, Trump is signal from there that uh, he maybe we can do something about this. We know? also hold some cards. Yeah. So you know, uh, it is clearly to show that uh, if Erdogan cooperates. Erdogan can benefit out of it. Just think hard. Thank you very much, Ambassador Bhandrakumar, for being with us, giving us a detailed exposition of all the things at play, because it is a complex chess board which is unfolding in front of us. Thank, Thank you. you very Thank much. Thank you very much. This is all the time we have for News Click today. We'll continue to, continue to discuss West Asia, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and other issues in the region with Ambassador Bhadra Kumar and on other programs.